and Jai Gurdiv. In the end, your growth, your true growth, all comes down to whether you want to have peace, quiet, contentment, harmony, joy, love, light going on inside of you because that's what's there or whether you want to take on the responsibility of attempting to create that through outside things, people, places, and things. Can you imagine looking at this world and saying, I'm going to use it to make peace within myself? The world tends to make commotion, doesn't tend to make peace. I'm going to use relationships with other people in order to achieve love. That's not usually what happens with other people on a steady, constant basis. There tends to be a lot of commotion and confusion in interpersonal relationships. Does that deny, I won't put a percentage on it, we will in a minute, that it could happen that interactions with this world leave you feeling some peace? Or that interactions with one or more human beings leave you feeling love? Of course, one could not deny that. Of course that happens. What percentage of the time that you interact with this world does it leave you feeling a deep sense of peace? Could I get an estimate? (laughs) Is there a number small as that? So it's funny, but it's so important to ask that. Because we really do take the position that the peace I'm going to get is the peace I create by doing things or not doing things within this world. Honestly, what percentage of the time, of all the time, that you interact with human beings do you walk away feeling overwhelming love? Unfortunately, it's not that high. People say they have to work hard at relationships, don't they? And that's just to get along. Forget love. I mean, to even have one is work. But to literally have one that generates love, that's what you feel, real love. Just, oh boy, (laughs) overwhelming love. What percentage of time of all your interactions with human beings over the course of your life have left you walking away feeling that? It's minuscule, isn't it? Sad. So your choice, again, is, and this is all of your spirituality, do you want to work on achieving an inner state of peace, love, harmony, contentment? Or do you want to work on achieving those special moments of external situations that generate those rare experiences of peace, love, harmony, and joy? Because that's your choice. You already see how rare those experiences are. Yet, I'm telling you, if you will look carefully, what you're trying to do is recreate them. What you're trying to do is to find the person, find the situation. In fact, it's embarrassing to see how true that is. Like, let's say we want to go out for dinner. Where do you want to go? You don't realize it. But what goes on at your mind, in your mind at that moment, is a thought process that if it was honest, would say this. Hey, you want to go out to dinner? Where do you want to go? And watch the thought process. What I want is to feel peace, love, ecstasy, and bliss. I wonder where I can eat that that will happen. (laughs) That's the honest thing that is really going on. You are trying to figure out in your own way, how do you decide Chinese and pizza or this or that? On what basis do you decide? You don't really think your body cares. The body could say nothing about that. It's a body. It, you know, it's, it's like a cow. It eats what you give it. Now, as long as it's within reason and sitting over here, it's not really telling you that it prefers pizza over Chinese. You are trying to create peace with your food. It's neat, isn't it? You're trying to create love with your food. You're trying to create well-being, a sense of harmony, a sense of up because of what you eat. And it is the same thing with your clothes, choosing your wardrobe and garments. It is the same thing with where do you want to go on your vacation? Where do you want to go on your vacation? 
You know, what's terrible is that you get a week or two all year. There you get it. You work a normal job, let's say. You want to do something with it. You don't want to waste it. What do you want to do with it? If you were totally honest, you would answer me. I know what I want to do with it. What? I want to feel as much peace, love, harmony, joy, and bliss that two weeks could ever hold. And I don't want to waste any of it, do you? Well, how are you going to do that? I don't know, and I'm going crazy trying to figure it out. <laughs> it's like I'm driving myself nuts going from website to website and going and reading and doing things and looking at where I could go and what would happen and who do I want to take with me. And that's what people do, isn't it? Honesty is such an amazing thing to sit there and look at. it. You have a choice. You are either spending your time, your effort, your energy, your attention, attempting to create and experience peace, love, harmony, joy as your natural state inside of yourself or you're attempting to find and create situations outside that tend to make you feel that. Do you see the difference? One is direct, the other is indirect. It is true, unfortunately, that you have had experiences outside that leave you feeling some peace. Certainly, relatively, there's no question about it. Every experience leaves you feeling something. So some of them move a little bit more toward the positive side, and some of them move toward the negative side. It's not just a matter of peace and joy and love. There's a whole spectrum in there, isn't there? You are attempting to do what you can to learn what experiences will do what, and then trying to have the ones that move at the most to the positive side and stay away from the ones that are on the negative side. Fair enough? That's what everybody's doing. The problem is... It's all about the indirect experience of what needs to happen outside that naturally does this thing which I know nothing about, which has caused me to feel love or caused me to feel peace. So eating just the right amount of food at just the right time with just the right person, whew, wow, harmony. Eating the wrong amount of food at the wrong time with the wrong person in the wrong place, disturbance. Well, I don't understand what's going on, I need to figure out what to do. I'm not spending my time trying to figure out why it does that. I'm just going to spend my time figuring out, all right, last time I had pizza with Sally at such and such a place, God, it was really beautiful. Let's go there. It has nothing to do with the pizza, does it? And you're trying to create these situations that will make you feel that again. You're trying to figure it out, but you're not trying to figure out what's going on. You're trying to figure out what worked before and what you think will work again, and then try to make it happen. I think that all of spirituality in the end comes down to giving up on that, which may sound like, aren't you giving up hope then, that you would have peace or love or harmony if you're not still out there trying to find that? Isn't that like a depressing state to give up on that? No, not really. Not at the truest level that I'm talking about. As long as you think that that is the best you can do, You already told me how small the percentage is that you have felt this peace and this love, the spontaneous peace and love, compared to all the minutes of your life. Then what are you going to do? Try and do that again for the rest of your life? You're not going to get anything. That, to me, is depressing. That, to me, is sad, that you think that's the most you can get, is to try and find those every once in a while and feel peace and love over that. I won't deny that certain chemistry and situations and just the right harmony of energies at a certain point in time with a person, place, or thing can make you feel peace or make you feel love. It's a very natural thing that happens, and you just feel that spontaneously. But I can guarantee you it's not very often. In fact, it's so not often it's not even worth talking about, is it? Like how many times you feel today, yesterday, day before, last week, three weeks ago, year, three years, five years. How often do people really feel these overwhelming things? And you just sit there and look at it, and you realize, not enough. Not even close to enough. And then the way you see it, as to whether it's really enough, is to watch your mind. And what you're going to see is that what your mind is doing is trying to make it be more. (laughs) Your mind is trying to figure out, how can I have more of that? What do I need to do? Where do I need to go? Who do I need to be with? Who do I need to meet? What do I need to change in order to get more? And sometimes it's not even that. That's the positive side. A lot of people slip down to where they're not trying to get positive. I'm just trying to not get hurt. I'm trying to stay away from the negative. That's the most positive I'm looking for, is the non-negative. If I can make it through the day with non-negative, that's good enough for me. 
That's a sign of someone who had a really rough life. I'm not even looking for love and peace and joy. I'm just looking for non-pain, non-suffering, non-disharmony and anguish and so on and so forth. Okay, it's all the same spectrum. It's just a question of where are you working on that spectrum? Do you see that? It goes anywhere from total anguish, suicidal thoughts, I can't even live with myself, to complete ecstasy and joy, and I can't even live with myself. (laughs) The opposites are the same, right? I'm so overwhelming, it's so unbelievable, I can't even live in myself. All right? But that's a better one. It's a better, can't live in yourself. And then in between, there's everything. And wherever you stand at a given time of your life, you are trying to move toward the positive. That's all there is to it. You're trying to stay away from the negative and move toward the positive. The trouble is, it's not so high, and it doesn't happen that often. And so there's a tremendous amount of work. It's unbelievable when you actually step back and see the amount of energy that we put into trying to have momentary situations that are okay. It's all of your time and all your effort. The problem is people don't understand there's an alternative. And spirituality true spirituality is that alternative. And what it says is, you got it all wrong. It is not that inside of you is a problematic, depressed, irritated problem. And the only way you're going to be okay is to meet people, places, things, situations, experiences, and so on, that will cause these moments of well-being. That that's what it's about, creating those moments, because otherwise it's a mess in there. That's not what spirituality says. Spirituality says, no, 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 no. You got this all wrong. It is beautiful in there. It is filled with love. It is filled with joy. It is filled with light. It is filled with peace. So strong that nothing in this world and no one in this world can take it away from you. Just like, watch this. Do you exist? Are you in there? Do you hear me? Do you know you're there? No one can take that from you. Your existence of being, your knowledge that you know you're there, is deep within your being. That's how deep you can have love and peace and joy and harmony. So deep that it has nothing to do with this world and nobody can touch it and nobody can take it from you. It is who you are. That's what spirituality says. It says that's your starting point. Now, if you feel that, it doesn't matter what you eat. (laughs) <laughs> it's just fun. No matter who you're with, it's fun. You feel it all the time. It is your spontaneous, natural state. That is true. That is what it is supposed to be like. That is what it is capable of being. That is who you are. Your natural state of being is one of love. It is one of peace. It is one of harmony. It is one of joy. And transcendent joy and transcendent peace. And what's meant by that is this world cannot touch it. Christ called it the peace that passes all understanding. It is beyond anything that this world can touch. That's your starting point. That's your background. Now, if that's true, and that's inside of there, then your alternative to doing this, what do I need to make happen so I can feel something once in a while, is to fix that, is to find that, is to go there inside, instead of putz around with situations outside. That's why it's called spirituality, because it's about finding your spiritual, true inner self and true inner being and true inner energy, which feeds you at that level, as opposed to indirectly trying to create situations that make it happen once in a while. The truth is, when you feel love, it is coming from inside of you. It's not outside of you. People got this all wrong. They think love is something you get from your boyfriend or your girlfriend. No, it's not. Love is something you get from your heart. Where does it come from when you feel it? It wells up inside your heart. Where's peace? It's inside of you. It's not somewhere else. It's not in nature. It's inside of you. But if you put yourself in a situation that stimulates that, that permits you to open to that part of you, then that's what you feel. I'm telling you, spirituality in your whole life is about at some point deciding, I don't want to have to get this indirectly. I don't want to have to beg, steal, and borrow from people, places, and things in this world in order to feel a moment of what I'm capable of being at all times. So you have to decide where do you want to work? Do you want to work outside, put all your thoughts, energy, heart, chi, shakti, energy, into creating people, places, and things, and deciding what you should be creating anyways in an external situation, or do you want to work inside to find out why you're not feeling that all the time? So 
to work on yourself inside is not an irrational thing to do. It's an extremely rational thing to do. It's not like, oh, it's an act of faith. No, nah, it's not faith. Faith got nothing to do with it. <laughs> All right? It's an act of, why would I work outside to get a penny when I can work inside and have billions of dollars? It is in there. That is where it is. The question is, how do you get to it? So that's your first position in spirituality, is deciding where do you want to do your work? If you want to do it outside, you're welcome. It's not like wrong. It's not like you can go to hell. You'll, you'll f- live in hell trying to make people be the way they need. I mean, even if you get something the way you want it, does it stay? If something creates a sense of peace, you get a new car, you feel some peace. How long does it last? Till the first person scratches it? Till something bumps into it? Till somebody gets a nicer one? Till it doesn't smell new anymore? What? How long? It's like it's a constant race to constantly try to get the next new thing that will cause you feeling the peace or joy or love. It is not a permanent state. You will never settle into it. It does not work. And even the degree you get it is so small, it's a tiny percentage of your life. What spirituality says is it doesn't say this stuff is wrong. It says it doesn't work. That's a totally different thing. A rational human being can look at it and say, yeah, I've spent my whole life trying to find it, and I haven't. (laughs) <laughs> okay? And I've been in lots of relationships, and I was not like, uh, here, you've had all these years to get filled with love, so much love that you never feel anything but love. How you doing? I mean, how many, certainly you've had more than one relationship. Certainly you've gotten close to people. Certainly you've done some stuff. Is it true that every single moment of your life you feel overwhelming love pouring through your being, just welling out of your heart, no matter what you're doing or where you are? In most people's case, the answer is no. That's not how you live. And you've had lots of time in your life to try and find peace, try to find what it is that works for you and fits for you. How you doing? Your mind quiet, your heart very open, you feel lots of peace and joy and harmony as you go through every moment of your life. In most people's cases, like all's, the answer is no. Then what does that tell you? Maybe it tells you that you're looking for love in all the wrong places. Right? Because that's what happens. You at some point wake up and realize there is another way to do this. That's what I like the most about spirituality. Spirituality does not say no to anybody. It does not say, no, you shouldn't do this. No, you can't have that. No, you're wrong. It says, sure, you should have everything you want. The problem is you're looking in the wrong place. You are looking outside to try to recreate something that exists inside. All right, what does it mean to work inside? It's really not very complicated. You don't have to have all kinds of teachings and so on. You just go inside And you see that sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes, you feel open energies. You feel good. And other times you don't. Have you noticed? Why? That's what spirituality says. That's not what your mind says. You have to get the difference. Your mind says, when you feel good, it says, I want this. I need to keep it. I need to keep that person around me. I need to keep this situation. Oh my God, what am I going to do if they ever leave? That's what your mind says when you feel peace. When you feel disharmony... It says, I don't want to feel this. What do I need to do? Where do I need to go? How do I change this? In other words, you get driven crazy either way. (laughs) You get driven crazy trying to keep that which you think will make you happy and trying to stay away from that which you think will make you sad. All right? So, by definition, you're not at peace. Your mind is always saying the answer is outside. It's always saying, what do you need to do outside to keep that which is making you happier and to get rid of that which is making you sad? At some point, you look at it, and you have to say, that is not going to work. If it is true that sometimes I feel joy, and sometimes I feel sorrow, or or disharmony, I feel openness and disharmony, you have to get to the point where you find out why. I think the clue, the main line is, you're not asking yourself, what do I do about it? You're asking yourself, why? Why is this happening? If you will explore that, You will open up the doors to this tremendous inner realm of understanding. You are in there. You are real. And there's all kinds of energies in there with you. And you know that. You live in there with them every day of your life. They're going on all the time. But what are you doing about it? And the answer is, you are trying to think about what to do outside that will make it better. That's all that goes on. What do I do outside to make it better? You have to change that. And you have to sit there and say, why? Why is it not beautiful inside all the time? Why? 
You have to get serious about that question. I, I demand you to ask that, right? Like, if your body is sick, you don't just run around saying, what do I need to do to support it? You ask, why? <laughs> I keep falling down. Here. You keep falling down. You keep passing out. Because every once in a while, you walk around, you pass out. What would you do if what your mind said is, jeez, I need something to hold me up. That's my problem. I keep falling down. I need something to hold me up. Maybe I'll hire somebody. Walk around with me. I'll get some crutches. or That'll do it. That's not what your mind says. Your mind says, what's wrong with me? Not what do I do about it. Right? How do I kind of compensate for it? What's wrong with me? I'm not supposed to be falling down. I'm supposed to need crutches. I'm not supposed to need somebody to walk around and do that. I'm supposed to be healthy. I'm supposed to feel well-being. And so you go to a doctor and you go places to try to figure out why is this thing happening to you instead of just accepting that that's the way it is and now i got to go out there and find some way to support me. See the difference? Inside yourself, that's not what you do. Inside yourself, it's a mess. And you just accept that. You just sit there and say, well, that's the way it is. And what do I need to do to make it a little more tolerable? What do I need to do to make it easier to live with? What do I need to do to every once in a while have some nice stuff? You should take the same attitude with your inner being that you do with your outer being. You should say, health inside is I feel love all the time. I feel joy all the time. I feel a complete sense of well-being and light, overwhelming. I can't even... I'm beside myself. (laughs) I'm beside myself. That's how much joy I feel. When I wake up in the morning, it's just pulsating and coursing through my being. I can't even get out of bed. It's just pouring through. That's how you should be. And when I lay my head down at night to go to sleep, I giggle myself to sleep. That's how it's supposed to be. You're just a camp. Camp Earth. You went to Camp Earth. And what kind of person goes to camp? It doesn't have a good time. Right? You're supposed to be having a good time. (laughs) That's what it boils down to. I'm telling you, that's how you should look at it. This is camp. You got sent to camp. It's just an exciting, fun place to be with all kinds of challenging situations going on. And you're suffering. And trying to even just find any good time that might be okay, you know, so that you don't suffer. You can fix that. Listen to me. The way it should be is you wake up in the morning, every single morning, no matter what's going to happen today and no matter what happened yesterday. And you're just like a kid on Christmas. That's how you are. You can't even contain yourself. You are just filled with shakti, with spirit, with joy. Excited about what's happening inside of you. Excited about anything that might happen today without even thinking about it. You're just enthused. You're just filled with juice and energy. Nothing's bothering you. Nothing. And then you get up and you go about your business. Have fun. Shower and brush your teeth and just be like a little kid, right? And just have fun doing the things you're doing. And then go into your day, and no matter what's happening, it's just camp, right? You're in this school or that school or this course or that course and doing different things or whatever's happening to you, you're just dealing with that. That's just the challenge of the day, the situation of the day. You get to ride horses, get to do this, whatever your day is, whatever you're doing, that's what it is. And then at night, you don't ever think about it again, ever. People will tell you the wrong thing. They tell you you should analyze your day. Look at it carefully. See what you did right. See what you did wrong. See who was nice to you. See who wasn't. See how you can better yourself. A yogi would never talk like that. The yogi says, here's what you do with the day. Bye. And you never, ever think about it again. Because if you're thinking about that day, you're not living this one. And you don't have much of a life if you're not living it. That I guarantee you. You know, you got to be present if you want to live life. If you want to have the kind of energy I'm talking about and enjoy your experience of life, you got to at least come to the party. And if you're back there thinking about what happened yesterday, not to mention the day before, not to mention last year, not to mention when you were three, because you do do that, don't you? (laughs) What happened when you were five, right? If you are back there doing that, guess who's missing today? You. So it's really pretty simple. You get to the point where you wake up and realize your work is inside. Your work is inside. What work? The work you're trying to do outside is inside. Everything you're doing outside is to try and get something going inside. If you do your work inside, you will win. If you do your work inside, it's permanent. If you can achieve a state inside yourself 
to where you open up enough to where these energies are flowing inside of you, then the joy that you feel once in a while is there all the time. The love that you feel once in a while is overwhelming all the time. You see a dog, you see a bird, you see a child, you see a person, you see anything. Not to mention the person you love. <laughs> it's like, it's just, it's just more. More of what's already there. That's how it should be. And then what happens when negative things happen? Because negative things, anybody knows? Negative things happen? Or at least things that aren't so much fun. All right? Things happen in this world, don't they? It's a happen in place. If you are fine inside, it does not make any difference what is going on outside, and that is the truth. It is because you are not fine inside that you are trying to create and keep and find situations outside that will make you do better. If what's happening outside is not doing that, and in fact is not in any way, shape, or form the direction that will make you better, then you're in trouble. But if you're okay inside to start with, it doesn't matter what's going on outside. It's just what's going on outside. It's that simple. Rich, poor, friends, no friends, good situations, bad situations. They are just what's happening. It's only because you think you need them to be okay that they cause a problem. You think you won't be okay if they're not okay. But if you are okay because you're naturally okay and you know you will be okay no matter what they do, then it doesn't matter what they do. Do you understand that? At least understand it logically. That's why the important work is inside yourself. You are capable of achieving that state. It does not matter what has ever happened to you. It doesn't matter what state you're in right now. You are capable because that energy is inside of you. The juice is inside of you. So the question becomes, and I'm not going to talk about that tonight because you have to check it out. Why don't you feel it? (laughs) Okay? It's one thing for me to sit there and say, it's in there all the time. Love, love so overwhelming you can't even see straight. Joy, energy, enthusiasm pouring inside of you. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what you've ever done. I don't care anything. That is the natural state of your being. Why are you not feeling that? And what you're going to see if you watch carefully, just watch. That's all I'm asking you is watch. Live in there. You're in there. Pay attention to what's going on in there. What you're going to see is that you close. And you know what that means. You don't have to be into yoga or any kind of special spiritual stuff to understand what the word close means. You close yourself. And when you close yourself, there is no energy. And when you open yourself, there is energy. And it's just that simple. And you just decide that if you want to work with yourself, then you have to decide that you want to stay open. You have to decide that you want to feel that joy all the time. That joy only flows when you're open. And again, it always comes back to the same thing. I don't want to keep beating on the point that is there's two ways to get open one is to try and find situations that you ever say that i'm really open around him ever use that term i feel real open in this situation i feel open and i feel real close around this person i real close in that position there is no question that there are situations in this world that will naturally cause you to open and naturally cause you to close you got a choice either you run around spending every moment of your life trying to find those situations or you find out why you can't be open all the time See the difference? That's the difference between what we call a worldly person, somebody who's out there thinking the answer is in the world, and I will try to find those situations, whatever the magic is that makes me open. I'll stay away from what makes me close, and I'll go what makes me open. Now you are 100% dependent upon this world, aren't you? That's it. It's going to be people, places, things. And, and I don't want, it's so silly, I don't want to talk about it, because you can figure it out for yourself. It ain't never going to happen. You are not going to find situations that keep you open and avoid situations that close you. It's not going to happen. The dynamics of it is very, very interesting once you pay attention, but I want you to pay attention to it. The alternative is to ask, why? It's such a simple question. Why do some things open me and other things close me? Why can't I just be open all the time? If there are going to be some things that open me and some things that close me, why can't everything open me and nothing close me? That'd be a good way to be, wouldn't it? <laughs> right then, no matter what's happening, everything at all times, it's having that effect on you of opening you. And no matter what happens, it can't close you. Now you won. See how I'm defining winning? You won. I don't want to take away from you that some things in the world open you. I want to give you that everything in the world opens you. Because that's why I always tell people it's not about renunciation. And it's not about anything different than what you already know. I like looking at it that way. There are definitely some people, places, or things that open you. And other people, places, or things that close you. You know that. 
and you like the opening, don't you? <laughs> All right? It feels really nice. That's what you mean, a nice experience. Why can't everything do that? And then you sit there and say, well, it just doesn't. Okay, but that, that's like telling me your body's passing out and it just does that. <laughs> I said, no, you, you get to ask why. You have the right to ask why. And if you ask why, and if you pay attention and you look, I am telling you, you can change it. You can achieve a state where everything opens you. I like that much better than talking about high spiritual states. I'd rather start with a state you know about and then extrapolate from there. You know that in certain circumstances, you just, woo! <laughs> it's just, wow, you just love being around that kind of person, you like eating this kind of thing, or you like being around a family, whatever the heck it is. Yeah, I just like that situation around the kids, whatever, pets, anything can do it, can't it? And now all of a sudden, you feel this tremendous openness. All I'm saying is, make believe for a moment in your mind that that happened with everyone you met and everywhere you went and everything. That's what it did. It caused that to happen. How would you like that? And you know that certain things will happen that close you. People say things, you see things, and all of a sudden you close down. Not everything, but certain things. What if there were less of those? What if there were so many less of those that there weren't any anymore? And so everything was opening you and nothing was closing you. What would that do to your life? That's all we're talking about, is learning the dynamics of why this opening and closing thing takes place, and then learning to change it. That's why ultimately, spirituality teaches acceptance and openness, because that's where the energy is going to come from. So ultimately, getting back to where we started, you have a basic choice. And that choice is, do you want to continue indirectly trying to get open and avoid closed by dealing with everything in the outside world? Or do you want to say, that's stupid. (laughs) It just is absurd. It hasn't worked so far and it's not going to work. And I don't know anybody it ever worked for. Not for any lasting period of time. Well, that's good data. You probably should check that out if that's the kind of feedback everybody's getting. And say, what's the alternative? The alternative is to go inside yourself and to see what is this opening? What is this closing? Why is it this way? And figure it out. It's really neat. Right? You're very special if you do that. Very few people do that. And figure it out and change it. <laughs> right? You want to change something? Change you. Don't change George or Harry or your car. Because that doesn't do it. Change you so that you open over many, many, many more things. The more things you open over, the happier you're going to be. The less things you close over, the happier you're going to be. When you suffer the most is when you close the most. Something happened and you close down and you get all this pain and anguish, and you're just closed inside yourself, and it's ugly. It's a very ugly thing. When you enjoy life the most is when you are like a flower, and you're just completely open. Now, is that true or not? You all know that's true. See, I don't have to teach anything. You already know it all. If that is true, then why not stay open even during negative times? If the truth is that it is the closing that causes pain and suffering, and that this opening and feeling this flow of joy and energy is what causes joy in in high states, then why not just say to yourself, I don't want to close. I won't close. I don't care what happens. I don't care what they do to me. I ain't closing. Period. You can do that. Who said you can't do that? It's your heart. You have to decide. You can learn to do this that I'm talking about. I think it takes less energy than all the mess you deal with with money and relationships and travel and (laughs) your clothes and what people think of you and just, in other words, what you do to try and make it so the positive things happen that open you and what you do to try and make it so the negative things don't happen that close you, I think it's less effort to learn to stay open all the time. I'm serious. You can absolutely do that. So spirituality is a very, very sensible thing to do. It's very common sense. It is not some mystical, faith-blind kind of thing. It is strictly sitting there saying to yourself, it does not work to realize that what I want is to be open, to feel joy, and what I don't want is to close. And I notice that the world does that sometimes, so I'm going to try and figure out what in the world will do it the way I want it and try to make it happen, which is what you're doing right now. That's what you do with your whole life. And instead, say, I'm going to find out why why I can't be open all the time. Because I want to be open all the time. I want to feel joy all the time. 
If a terrible thing happens to you, that's terrible enough. The fact that it causes suffering inside of you is worse, not better. You do not have to let the second thing happen. You can get mugged in New York and have somebody steal your purse or your wallet and run away with that and get scared to death and get up and be fine. Or you can get mugged in New York and in essence never get up. You're the one who was mugged in New York and you're scared to go anywhere and you're scared to do anything and it's all you ever talk about and you join the anti-mugging clubs. You run around and tell everybody what it's like to get mugged and it's just, that's your life. You're the, you're the mugged one, okay? <laughs> Don't laugh, people do that, all right? So in other words, an incident, one incident happened on the planet and it owned your life. You'll never feel, of course I don't feel love, I got mugged. All right, I'm not even bothered with relationships anymore. I can't let anybody get that close, they could bug me. <laughs> I don't know why not. I already lost my water, I lose my heart. Okay, it's like you got all kinds of little one-liners come out of this stuff. You just decide, which do you want to be? Do you want to be the person who got mugged? That's what happened, I was walking out of the street, I got mugged. All right, it happens. And I got up. And what'd you do? I got up and I went and started to get my papers again and called you know, my credit cards and canceled them. I did. Then what'd you do? Well, I continued my vacation. Well, what was I going to do? Then what'd you do? I came home. Then what'd you do? I went to work. I don't understand. What'd you do about it? I don't understand. <laughs> she says, what do you do about anything? You keep on trucking. Right? You stay open. You do not let it leave impacts on top of you. And you enjoy your life. You just go about your life. The other way, it destroyed your life. But I want to ask you, if it's true that it could be either way, then did it destroy your life or did you destroy your life? If it's true that outer situations are what they are, but then there's inner situations and they are different, it's your choice whether the outer situations destroy your inner situation or whether the outer situations are just something that happened and your inner situation is unaffected by it. I'm telling you, It is your choice. You are the one who chooses to react the way that you do. And you choose to close. Now, it's true that you have to learn to work with yourself so that you can get to that state. But you have to learn to work with the whole world and everybody in it to try and make it so it'll open you. (laughs) All right? So, which is easier? I just, the more I look at it, it's crazy. One, you only have to work with you. You're there all the time and you only have to work with yourself. The other, you've got to work with every single person and everything they say forever, no matter where you go and everything they do. Because at any given point, somebody could close you, couldn't they? It's just not logical, okay? You have the right to be happy. You have the right to feel love all the time, all the time, welling, overwhelming, great joy and love, no matter what's going on. Does that mean you don't need a relationship? Use relationships to give your love away. (laughs) Just don't use relationships to feel love because they're going to betray you. It doesn't work that way. Get filled with love and then enjoy sharing it with special people. It's wonderful. That's what a special person's for. It's somebody you're allowed to give all your love to. Not somebody you get love from. Not somebody who makes you feel love. Because that doesn't work. It's somebody who you enjoy sharing with. So this is your choice. And at some point, you have to really get serious about it. We talked about it a fair amount. But you've got to look at it. Which do you want to do? Do you want to continue going outside to try and somehow find these magical situations that open you and then try to keep them, even though that doesn't work? Or do you want to find out why and how to be open all the time so you can feel all of this joy all the time? And that means working inside of yourself instead of outside yourself. To be encouraging to you, once you decide that that's what you want to do, it's not that hard. It's like anything else, right? If you decide that's what you want, it's going to happen, isn't it? Anything you really decided in life that you wanted to focus on and work with and stayed focused on it, it happens. This one's even easier because you don't have to deal with other people. You only have to deal with you. You can't blame anybody, nothing. It's just all up to you. You want to stay open? You want to feel love? Stay open and feel love. You don't want to close and feel anguish and get all scarred and messed up? Then don't. (laughs) You're pretty neat in it. You can get very high. You're very special. You're very beautiful. And it's silly that you have to run around and beg for these little moments, like crumbs, that make you feel like something's okay when what you have going on inside of you is the most beautiful thing there is. Mm, Jack Redeff.